we meet in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to our Eucharist on this Tuesday morning, following the 18th Sunday after Trinity. We're slowly racing through the year now, and indeed well into autumn. And as we continue to face the issues around COVID, so we pray for all of those who are working so hard to keep us safe. Let us ask God to prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and in sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Keep me in your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so for the collect for this week, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that, forsaking what lies behind, and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And so we attend to the reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined for us an adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, 
things in heaven and things on earth. This is the word of the Lord. <coughs> the response to the psalm is, Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. The Lord has made known his salvation. His deliverance has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Woe to you, for your be you build the tombs of the prophets whom your ancestors killed. So you are witnesses and approve of the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute, so that this generation may be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be charged against this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves, and you hindered those who were entering. When Jesus went outside, the scribes and the Pharisees began to be very hostile towards him and to cross-examine him about many things, lying in wait for him to catch him in something he might say. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. O Christ. I speak in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. If you're standing up. You know, God has appointed us all to be his daughters and his sons. We are the followers of Christ. And in the reading from Ephesians, that speaks loftily of God's goodness and the great results for us humans 
who gain this new relation to God by his gifts. Paul, writing to the Ephesians, speaks also of how this was accomplished. It is through the blood of Christ that we have been redeemed, forgiven, and raised to this status as sons and daughters of God, as brothers and sisters of Christ. Such are the details of our redemption. The hardness, the hostility and blindness of Jesus' opponents. We must actually listen and pay attention to the Gospel. Where Jesus is clearly actually accusing the scribes and the Pharisees of killing the prophets, of killing those who came before him to bring salvation to Israel. And rather than dwell in these basic negative matters or get on our moral problems and duties. The letter to the Ephesians seems intent on inspiring us to following Christ by reminding us of our dignity as the children of God. We must always remember this in hard times and times of adversity that we are on God's side and he is on ours. We have been called to and blessed by God with the exalted position of being his children. Now pride in that status and gratitude to God should inspire us to live holy lives without blemish. And with our fellow human beings, we should behave appropriately. Christians are, in a sense, a vanguard of the new humanity. We talk at this time of COVID, of there being new beginnings, of there being a new way of doing things. And we should be at the vanguard of those new ways. We should be seen to be bringing something fresh and new to our community. We need to be actually bringing ourselves, showing that we're bound up and caught up in God, not bound up and caught up in the world at this moment rather than plotting and persecuting as the scribes and the Pharisees did for Jesus, rather than trying to get in the way and obstruct things and keeping things just as they were because that's the way it always was. We need to be preaching a new world. We need to be preaching of a new world of love and compassion, of real understanding of each other, of coming and listening to one another of giving best regard to other people and actually expressing ourselves to them in love. There's enough hatred in this world at the moment. There's enough contrariness in this world at the moment. There's enough challenge in this world at the moment. And what we need to be doing is showing that God's way is a way which is a positive way, a way of caring for one another, a way of actually putting ourselves out on behalf of other people, that they may see the love that we express, the love of neighbour and the love of God, that they may come to know God as well. God's plans and hopes for humanity are positive, that we now are his hands and his feet and his eyes and his mouth and his ears, and we need to bring in that new kingdom in any way that we can find that is possible, that is expressed in love. May that be so in the coming months as we continue to face a very uncertain time. Amen. And so now in the power of the Spirit and in union with our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Father. Praying for the church throughout the world, that it may be seen to be an outward-looking and loving community, bringing new solutions to old problems. We pray for Christopher and Richard, our bishop, for Simon, our archdeacon, and Rachel, our area dean. We pray for our parish and the other parishes in Mitcham, We pray for our local area. We give thanks 
all those who strive to make this a better place to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of your creation. And as we have just celebrated our harvest tides, we are more mindful than ever for those who go without. We pray for those who are homeless this day. We pray for faith in action the YMCA and other initiatives that seek to provide accommodation for people. And we pray for those who may be stranded on the streets this winter, praying that they may find shelter. We pray for those who go without adequate food, and praying especially for the Wimbledon Food Bank and food banks across this country and across the world which seek to make life a little bit better for those who go without. And we pray for those without clean water, those who suffer as a consequence of drinking infected water, for those who are ill as a consequence. Lord, your gift of water is one of the basic essentials of life and we are welcomed into your community through the baptism of water. It reminds us of the fundamental property that it is the source of life. May we, and Water Aid and all the charities who seek to make things better in that regard, be supported to bring health and vitality to everyone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as a loving community, we bring before you those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit at this current time. We individually name Andrew McNinn, Jesse Willoughby, Amir Gill, Deborah Chapman, Joyce Nelson, Michael Oy, Dylan Long, Robert Willer and Barbara Atkins. We pray for those in our intercessions book and in a moment of silence we pray for those who we carry in our own hearts this particular day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for those who have passed away. We pray especially for the souls of Matilda Slater, Sergeant Matthew Ratana, for Jeffrey Nwusso. We remember those whose years minds fall about this time, and we give thanks for their lives and their witness. Rest eternal grant them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our so we finally pray for ourselves, Lord, asking that we may be inspired to bring your love to our local community, to bring your love to the world, that your name may be glorified. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for the peace, particularly if you're a number at home this morning. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace at home and pray for those who we cannot see today but have our concern.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. same way after supper he took the cup and again he gave you thanks he gave it to them saying drink this all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the mother of God, Peter, Paul, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let 
set us free in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Behold, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. We praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast. For here we receive you. Here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace. And here a pledge of future glory is given, where we shall feast at that table where you reign with all your saints forever and ever. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen indeed, and a very warm welcome again to you all this morning watching, and I hope you have a good day and a good week. We continue with our open church services currently at 11 o'clock on a Tuesday morning and a Sunday morning, and you will be very welcome to come along for those short services where you may receive Holy Communion. We are happy to say that the heating is back on in church after an amount of work which had to be done on the system, all is working well now. So even though it's cold outside, it's just a little bit warmer in here. We do have to keep the windows open for ventilation now. That's one of the requirements of the COVID precautions. But at least the chill is off. And you will be very warmly welcomed here, both in body and in spirit. The Lord be with you. 
the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.